Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber, and my gosh, look who's joining me. Former federal prosecutor Lee Sweel and trial attorney Bob Hillow. We have a huge day for you. We are going to be live in two, maybe even three courtrooms. A lot of live trials, a lot of legal stories to break down. So you know what I'm going to say. Let's get started right now. Now, Lee, it doesn't get any more real than that. I mean, you right. see the reaction on his face about what this is going. What is your reaction to seeing this from yesterday? All right. It sounds more confusing than it is. Right. It's really all not, not that confusing when you think about the acts that he's actually be convicted of. And now the jury is deliberating. These are lewd acts. These are rape acts. But you're talking about multiple victims here. And you're talking about evidence in each one of these counts that he's being, you know, charged with that differs. You know, some of the uh, accounts are of, you know, the, the evidence is of, I saw tattoos. I couldn't see his face. Some of the counts are, you know, he didn't expose himself. It was undercover. You know, we, I'm not going to get too graphic, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it was undercover. So um, he didn't expose all of himself. So, you know, it's a lot for the jury to process and go through. And you can see through some of their questions that they're giving now that there's discontent and rumbling within the jury themselves, the jury pool. They may not be liking each other too much mm. at this point, and they're having to go through this graphic stuff. But as far as being real right there, oh, yeah, right. that's pretty real. It, it doesn't get any more real than this. He seems asking his attorneys what's happening, right. you know, and they say and, it's okay. In a state of disbelief. In a state of disbelief, understandably so. Bob, the, I have to believe the jury's giving this a lot of careful thought. They're deadlocked on eight other charges, but if you look at Jane Doe number five, they said, okay, Kellen Winslow, we're going to find you guilty of one of those counts of lewd conduct exposing yourself to this woman in the gym, but not the jacuzzi. So they could have easily said, hey, we're going to find you guilty across the board with what you did with this woman, but they took it under careful consideration. They're separating these counts. What does that tell you? Well, look at the way they did this. They came out with the counts that they were most comfortable with with the evidence, uh, the ones where there was some visual identification um, and, and something other than just trying to create a circumstantial background. I also think it's interesting they came out with these because I think there's a deadlock, but it may be a minority or maybe one person in there. So they wanted to come out because they were afraid to let him go, thinking, and maybe that's where some of the questions came in, that if, if, we, if we wait and we can't agree on everything, then is he convicted of nothing? Right. So I think they wanted to come out uh, on those things that they were all in agreement with. And, you well, know. well, that's especially what we're getting this strange question about the law. Yeah, that's I mean, a really weird question that we're getting right so now. So before is, what you're saying is before the verdicts came down, right. they they presented a question, basically what is under oath mean? Right. And number two, are we supposed to follow what the law is or what we think the law well, should be? It, if right, you right. heard that, right. what what would you think if you're the sitting judge here? If I'm the sitting judge and I'm the and I'm the prosecutor. I'm get, I don't know about you two, but I'm getting a little nervous. Oh, right? yeah, of course. What have we been <laughs> doing for the last right. two, few this weeks? This could be a wild jur jury pool that may run away with, you know, what does this mean? Uh, are they, are they going to take the law as they want the law to be or the law as the jury instructions were read? Well, what That's I'm what seeing I'm it as, Lise, is that they just are trying to weigh the credibility of some of these Jane Doe's. Right. They, they didn't make right. a decision on Jane Doe number one. She was the first witness. She was the first Jane Doe that testified. Some would argue maybe the least credible. They haven't made a decision on her yet. What do you make of that? Well, exactly that, that they're taking, they're, they're weighing her credibility and they're not sure about her. And some of the other Jane Doe's are easier, as, as you were just saying, to, you know, because there's more evidentiary built in. You know, there's more credibility, eyewitnesses. The, the hot tub example is the best example. Right. That, you know, it was a crowded hot tub. Bubbles. Bubbles, and, yeah. all of that. It's hard to see, it, was it this, you know, was it this right. guy, that guy? no real definition. And you got to respect them for that, Absolutely. that they don't know exactly. And Bob, they also didn't make a decision on Jane Doe number four. This is the uh, alleged rape that occurred back in 2003 when she was only a teenager. They're wrestling with that decision as well. Well, wrestling is the word. This jury is being very careful about what they're doing. That uh, question about applying the law could mean with respect to maybe one juror. Um, and, and again, yes, if I was the state, I'd be worried about that. You know, how many are having right. that question. But I think that when you have a question like that, it indicates that, um, you know, they're trying to address maybe dissension part of the case. And this is the problem when you try a number of cases together uh, with a number of victims, because that first one 
really bombed out of the chute, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But uh, the case obviously picked up momentum and they finished strongly. But of course you want to do that on the other side. You want to do that as a prosecutor because you want to show common pattern, common modus operandi. You want to show that. Right. You know, so you want to bring all these victims together to show, hey, this isn't one isolated event. And you also know, come on, let's we live in the real world. I know what you're going to say. This guy, he's a celebrity. He's a hero. The, you have to bring him down a peg, and that's going to be harder to do because of his stardom status. Right. And the other idea is if one of the charges is weak, well, they, you could say to the jury, well, exactly. you know, he, this bolster. one's so strong. Yeah, exactly. I mean, now let's just talk about what he was just convicted of, okay? If I'm understanding this correctly, Eight years is, could be the maximum for the forcible rape. Six months for each one of those other charges. That's nine years sure. right there. The it, chances he would actually get prison time? Oh, he's going to get prison time. Okay. I think so. Absolutely. Okay. Because the judge, now, now this is where being a star, a celebrity, goes against him. Because there's going to be so much attention. We're all talking about it. Lots of people are talking about it. That the judge knows that. And the judge is, gonna, is, is, is knowing that a light sentence would be, he'd be castigated by the media for doing so. Yep, I agree with you. Okay, now Bob, serious charge here, that forcible rape, one of the most serious ones. So they found him guilty of raping this woman. What about her testimony did they cling on to? What did they say, you know what? We, we're still not sure about Jane Doe number one. We're still not sure about Jane Doe number four, but we got Jane Doe number two here. What, did, what really did they hold on to, you think? Well, I think number one, they found her testimony very credible. You, you listened to her. She was very measured, very specific, very consistent. Uh, again, we don't have the cross yet to compare it to, uh, but obviously the cross did not undermine that credibility that she came out of the shoot with. We're going to get to that cross in a second, but Lisa, I want to get to you. Yeah. So he's found guilty of count four, forcible rape of this woman. Jury didn't make a decision on count five, sodomy by use of force of this same woman. They're really giving this consideration. What do you think about this? And it may be getting into such technicalities as when she testifies about it, that the sodomy occurs when he does the act and then actually finishes the act, he's not inside her. Right. Maybe it's even that technical I, mean, I but don't. You have to be, right? You have to be this I know, technical. I know, exactly. It's uncomfortable. It's Sorry, an uncomfortable I, case, but you, I know, no, you, know, well. I, you have to be with this <laughs> but, because but that's that what it is. But that may be that technical, but maybe it's that, that, that. I'm just thinking if it's that, because to follow a logical pattern here, if they convict her on, if they've convicted on the rape, what could they be grasping at to not convict? on the forcible sodomy because they've already convicted sure. on the forcible rape. So to me, to my mind, that that one key, that one piece may be the thing that could be hanging them up on that. And look, when we talk about reasonable doubt, they're really holding on to this, Bob. That concept, they're holding on to reasonable doubt. That's why you have to imagine they didn't find him guilty of masturbating in the jacuzzi, but at the same point, they felt that nine days earlier, he did expose himself to that 77-year-old woman uh, in the gym. They're dissecting each element yeah. of each offense yes. with each of these victims. And um, this may go back to the other question with uh, maybe on the definition between the difference between the sodomy and the forcible rape, and that might have been the one juror had a question on that. We right. don't know, but um, that would but seem she's, to. She's yeah. extremely credible here. But I, I, she, she admits that she knew him. Exactly. Talked with him. I think that goes to her credibility as well. Yeah. It, it wasn't just that this happened out of the blue. She, you know, well, there was a relationship, if you will, before. Exactly. And and I'll tell you what. You know, Bob, you mentioned the cross examination. I want us both. I want us all to see this right now because, as you said, Bob. It, something didn't work. Watch. Now, at least I get it. Cross-examination of a witness like this oh. can be tough. How do you think they did? Horribly. Did you see the way that judge was looking at that lawyer? I mean, look, the jurors don't like lawyers in the courtroom at all. Okay, right. let's face it, yeah. right? They or like, in life in general. But, or but, uh, okay, that's a or life matter. in general. That's, Sorry, a separate, guys. that's a separate discussion. But generally, they like the judge because the judge is the one that's there greeting them, talking to them every day, feeding them lunch, you know, snacks. Um, they look to the judge for the law instructions. That judge was sending so many signals to that lawyer, move on, ask a question, 
And that, the look that that judge was giving that lawyer was bad. And those jurors, m many of them, were looking at the, you know, the questioner and all that. We're, they're also looking at the judge and the questions. And the questions, true or false, yes or no? Right. Horrible, bad way to treat a victim, even if you don't believe the victim, bad way to treat a victim. And Lisa's making a great point, Bob. I mean, do you think that's why this jury came back and said, no, we're not going to listen to what this cross-examination was. We believe her, and we're going to find him guilty of rape. Sure. I, I mean, I, I, I totally agree that the jury identifies with the witness in the case. Uh, and um, they're more sympathetic under the questioning. Here, she was nervous. It was clear she was nervous. She was shaking. Um, you couldn't see her facial expressions. But coupled with looking at the judge, uh, and they were probably getting the same reaction to the questions as the judge was, uh, but she held her ground and she stayed consistent. So, you know, I, I think that that cross-examination, while it may be the only thing they could have thrown sure. at her as a witness here, too, um, was just not effective enough to uh, create a reasonable doubt in the jury's mind. Yeah, we can help the prosecution. Yeah, it probably did. And look, you know, they're winning so far. Yeah, they're winning so far. And I want to break it down more when we get back what the, we can expect moving forward and what's already happened in this case, because there is a lot to dissect in the Kellen Winslow trial, and we don't even know what the jury's going to do with the eight other verdicts. So let's take a break. When we come back, a lot more to discuss.